Hey everybody, Egnards here. Um, I'm actually at work right now, um, and I've been wanting to do this video for quite a long time. I didn't really necessarily know how to do it, um, but you know, I, I figured that over, out over the last couple of weeks. Um, what most people know me for, obviously, is for Justice for Jar Jar and, and the whole Gungan movement and, and jumpstarting that. But the other thing that some people know me for, and I do get hit on Discord often for, um, is my love of the Night Sister team and just how crazy they have evolved since Marin has come out. And I've been collecting a lot of videos since that time um, on how they really perform in ROTE, all right, so Rise of the Empire, uh, on auto of all things. So like how well they can do in just about every single phase. So what I'm gonna do here, and I'll, I'll talk throughout and about uh, the team itself, and I'm gonna throw up some videos uh, based on the different phases. They're going at 1.75x speed, right? So they're gonna be going through really, really fast. But the idea is just to kind of give you a taste and an understanding of why I love the team. Uh, and if you wanna kind of see a slower down version or the, or the modding that I use, then you can always go to those uh, videos themselves in my different breakdown um, videos that I have in my planet section. So let's start off in Mustafar, right? And the thing that I really, really, really like about the, the Night Sisters uh, is that for the most part, they're very reliable. Um, and I ne haven't necessarily noticed any strong desire to have anything other than um, mediocre mods, right? So you'll notice throughout that some of mine do have really strong mods and I've been working on them over the last like four or five, six months. But when I first started doing this, uh, that wasn't necessarily the case. The only character that I had a really strong affinity for uh, was Meryn. There are only really two battles throughout Rise of the Empire that I have currently tried where I've found um, that it was a little bit iffy and where I don't feel like it is totally reliable. And I'll point those out as we go along. So as you can see on Mustafar, uh, no platoons, right? This is straight out the gate. And basically what's going on is, is the interaction of there being so many resurrections on the team between Mother Talzin being able to call those um, those temporary reses, between Old Daka being protected behind Zombie and being able to do a mass res, and between Marin having that oh crap uh, mechanic to be able to resurrect somebody a little bit later if things go awry. But when I watch these battles and, and, and I kind of pay attention and, and see what works and what doesn't work, I, I notice that it's very, very rare that those types of situations, right, that they come up. You never really see it happen. So you can see as we kind of finish on Mustafar, super, super, super easy. It does not take that long to finish this battle at all. Um, and it wasn't until recently, funny enough, that I actually tried Corellia or Felucia just because I never really needed to do it. But you'll kind of see that, um, again, super easy battle. Uh, I do not have videos for these things, but I have tried um, using Night Sisters also in the Hondo special mission on Felucia. Um, and I don't want to quote me on this. I'm almost positive I've tried it on the Star Killer special mission on Corellia. I know for a fact that it works in the Fennec special mission on Tatooine as well. I just don't have video evidence of those things. The one battle that I haven't been able to try out yet, and I would really love for somebody to try out, um, I believe it's the Young Han Kira battle that people are kind of struggling with. I think that there's an opportunity for the Night Sisters to kind of work there. Um, I don't necessarily know the three that I would use. Probably Daka Zombie Marin, but I don't know. When when I get those characters up, I, I will try them. Now, one thing with this team is obviously you know, you're gonna have to invest them pretty high to Relic 8 in order to get all the way to the end. But the nice thing with them is being an older team, there's only one character on the team that's really Kyrotech heavy, okay? And that's Marin, and it's really not even that bad. The rest of the team, you're only gonna have it um, on their uh, their finisher piece in G12, which makes them fairly easy to build up overall and they have that assault battle viability that not all teams have with the secrets and shadows i don't recommend building 
only towards the Night Sisters just for the assault battle. That can get a little bit expensive, but I do see it as really insanely viable of a team. This right here, Genosis versus the Acolyte, this is one of the two battles where there is some degree of iffiness, right? I would say I win it about 60% of the time, but you'll notice that there is no uh, droid. So I also do not have platoon actives here, or platoons active here, because at six of six platoons, the battle starts with one. It really comes down to Oldaka stacking um, health and whether or not she's able to do that effectively or whether the Acolyte is gonna take her out like really, really quickly. Um, again, really the only one that I find um, to be unreliable other than, well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. All right, so we've got Felucia coming up. We're still P2, super, super, super easy. I think I did this like two weeks ago and I, was, I wasn't even surprised at this point because I had gone so far into TB. So I wanna kind of bounce away from talking about this mission itself. But the other nice things about the Night Sisters uh, are in GAC, I, I personally, use them as a Jabba two shot. I'm, I'm a turtle, so I send all my GLs on uh, defense, um, which makes it a little bit harder for me to um, break through walls. So having a two shot option on a GL is, is like, is perfect. You know, um, you can also use them against some of the other top level teams. I've used them effectively against, hmm. I've used it against Zori teams, but it's a little bit iffier if, if Rose is involved there. Um, and in Territory Wars, they're really nice against the Poggle Omicron, right? Everybody's trying to find a way to get around that. That's one battle that you can't do on auto because there's just so much healing going on. But if you run it mostly on auto for the first couple of minutes and then take it off auto as you start to build stacks, it becomes a much, much, much easier battle. I don't even pay attention to it anymore. Um, it's kind of like a, an inside joke within my guild, how I take that stuff out. Tatooine, super easy. Honestly, Tatooine as it stands is a super easy um, planet. Uh, you really just have to contend with the dots and any team that's gonna have a lot of resurrections or any team that's going to take less damage from dots is gonna do really, really well here. You know, Gas does really well here too, as well because of his shielding. Um, I use them here on day four because we do a holdback strategy. Day three, I actually you do it against a special mission, which we'll kind of show you next. Speaking of the Dathomir special mission, okay, and that's gonna be coming up and you'll kind of see this in a minute. There's really two important things um, about making sure that you do that correctly. Number one, that's the one mission where you are gonna wanna use an old DACA lead, not a Mother Towson lead, because everything here is going to revolve around old DACA having really, really, really high health. I actually stumbled on being able to do this mission by accident because the first um, tier, so phase one of two, super easy, but it does take a long time because of Hondo. So traditionally, I would auto just the first tier, come back to my phone about five minutes later, um, and then take it off auto for the second tier. I happened to do that one week. Uh, I happened to film it because a guildmate wanted some help on this mission, and I walked back to my phone just a little bit too late, and I ended up saying, oh, wait a second, like I actually beat this thing. Um, the reason why this can get iffy is the AoEs in phase two, right? Dash AoE, if you do not have high health, can really make or break the beginning of the battle. Um, when all of my Night Sisters were R7, except for Meryn, who I brought to R9 immediately, I found that I did 100% have to do this um, on manual. Now that they're all R8, I have been running this mission on full auto for the last eight cycles and I have lost uh, a grand total of one time, right? So seven out of eight of those battles, I was able to beat on auto. You can see that does take a little bit longer here just because of all of the revives. This is why everybody hates Dathomir uh, because the battles are a little longer than usual unless you have something that controls revives. 
But the nice thing, obviously, is you have Asajj Ventress who's going to constantly stack and build and build and build to make it a little bit easier to contend with that as the battle goes on. Um, this is where it gets a little bit tough. You know, Maul going five times in a row isn't necessarily a big deal um, since those are all turns and, you know, we have that resurrection timer that happens. It's really Dash being able to kill everything pretty much immediately if you don't have the correct modding that becomes your primary concern the battle's not super hard if you play this on manual and you control him with stuns right but you're going to want that really really high health um in order <laughs> there's my wife um you're going to want that really really high health in order to kind of last last through that okay you can see we're kind of running towards the end of the battle uh, special guest star my wife again um i have all of my night sisters r8 now i highly recommend it as a like a mid late to end game player farm i don't think that it's something that somebody at the mid game or lower really should invest in i do think that at that point in the game it can be a little bit of a waste of your um resources but as you start to get you know six to eight gls and you're looking at side farms these guys are a great opportunity. One thing that you will notice with this battle, um, and we'll kind of show you in, in a second as, as my modding goes through, is that in Kessel, you can actually underman the battles, right? You can't go less than four, but you can take just four into the battle, and the Night Sisters without Asajj Ventress are still able to completely decimate um, the other team. I have done this so many times. I have never lost it. I actually give up Asajj Ventress as one of my platoons during day five, day four of day five. Um, so this was just a fun option that I tried about two months ago to see if it would work. And I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised with you know how they were able to contend with the battle and how quickly they're able to contend with the battle. Okay, and then moving on, I know that a lot of people have trouble with Haven class. This one does have platoons, right? You, you need them. I have had guildmates show me that on manual they have beaten this mission with Night Sisters without platoons. But my goal here is to highlight just how effective they are without really having to do anything yourself, right? So with platoon... Um, on auto, I find that you do need the platoons in order to effectively beat the mission, but it is very, very reliable. What I will say is I have tried the sortie mission. Obviously can't beat the sortie mission. I know people are still trying to find a way around the sortie mission. Uh, I think old Daka lead has potential, but I'm not, um, I'm not holding my breath there, right? This one, easy. Um, having looked at the day five planets and R9. I do think that there is potential for these guys to also beat that planet as well. All right, I forgot the names of the, the um, dark side and the neutral one, but I do see opportunities there for Night Sisters. Obviously just not there yet. Uh, it is a team that I am planning to bring to R9 when it gets to that point. So with that said, as we finish up this battle, as we get there, my goal here is just to, um, you know, hopefully see some of my my people who uh, are looking for something to do to help their guild, to help themselves, to contribute all around in the game, to kind of look at Night Sisters and say, hey, wait a second, they are a team that uh, they might actually be worth their weight in gold. Okay, the one thing that I did not touch on here is conquest. Um, I don't particularly use them often in conquest. But because of their high plague rate and Amplify Agony almost always being available, they are really a solid team, especially in those times where we start to see, you know, Night Sister centric um, uh, feats that get popped up. I do find that they're very easily to con uh, easy, easily able to contend with things. I just don't need them as an option. 
Um, with that said, I am looking to do more of these highlight reels in the future, so hopefully you guys get something out of this. Uh, and just as a reminder, we just started a Discord. I hope to see you there. I like chatting with you guys. I'm, I'm very happy with the community that we've be, uh, built over the last couple of months. Thank you for that support. Peace out.